Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here with an urgent update on Invest 99L for Tuesday, November the 12th, 2024. So to start off this video, here's a look at the GOES East satellite imagery provided by College of DuPage. And we can get an idea where our area of disturbed weather currently is located. This is east of Jamaica for this afternoon. And if we look at the satellite imagery really closely, we don't only see some really deep convection that has increased over the circulation, but if we look at the low level cloud motions, we clearly have very light winds on the western side of the circulation. We also have really light winds here, but they're coming in out of the southeast, but it's really underneath all this deep convection where we have really strong stout south and south southwesterly winds. So somewhere in here is where we do have a wave pocket that is trying to take shape here where we have winds doing this. They curve really tightly all around and then they come in out of the north on the western side. So now when we show you all the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center for this afternoon, you can see that they now have a high chance, a 90% chance of a tropical depression or storm to form in the next seven days. So anyone living in the Northwestern Caribbean, including the Yucatan Peninsula, Honduras, Belize, really need, needs to be watching this system really carefully because this could explode quite significantly. Now, with that being said, let's get into the meat of this video at taking a look at our numerical global computer model guidance on Invest 99L as the GFS, the Euro, the Canadian, Icon are all indicating that this could become a very intense hurricane in the northwestern portion of the Caribbean. So let's first look at the GFS model here. And as we go forward, we can see that not much is going to happen in the next couple of days. This is going to be slow to develop here due to some drier air and a little bit of vertical wind shear that the system is encountering. But as we go beyond the two-day mark here by Thursday and then into the weekend, that's when the system really explodes here. Now, unfortunately, my iPad is no longer with me. It broke because I stepped on it by accident, so I don't have my iPad with me. So hopefully, this does not develop in a hurry like the GFS is showing because I am going on a little vacation where I'm going to try to squeeze out a morning video on Friday for you all on this system if necessary. But regardless of travel development, this could really develop in a very big hurry. By Sunday morning in about five days, we have a very intense hurricane here. This would be a Category 3, a Category 4 hurricane on the GFS model. And it gets even stronger. Look at this. gets down to 937 millibars by Sunday, November the 17th, 2024. And then it gets slingshotted into the Northwestern Caribbean throughout the uh, Yucatan Channel where pressures are 942. So this would be a very intense hurricane between a Category 3 to a Category 4 hurricane and then goes into the Gulf. Now, I don't know if that's a glitch, but that's a 916 millibar system. Looks like 916. I don't know if I'm reading that wrong, but it does look like it's 916 there by Tuesday next week. And then it weakens as it begins to approach Florida but now this is the furthest I'm going to go out here actually we'll go out through Wednesday morning as it approaches the big bend this would be a very big disaster Florida literally needs to be done getting hurricanes you have had Hurricane Debbie you had Hurricane Helene you had Hurricane Milton now we could be looking at another hurricane like what in the name of Frank is going on here with with these systems i mean they just like florida this year i guess florida is a big target now hopefully this doesn't happen but there is the last three runs have shown that something could move into the southeastern portion of the gulf of mexico as a formidable hurricane. now when we take a look at the european model it shows us something a lot different than the gfs model but the gfs model has done quite well for the tropics this year so we're probably going to rely more on the gfs not entirely because we do have other models that show us something different. So the European model shows that this doesn't develop as quickly and is probably a tropical depression or so, maybe a tropical storm. And then it just kind of hangs out, out around here near, say, Belize and as well as Yucatan, uh, not Yucatan, uh, and Honduras, that's what I meant to say. 
Um, really, really concerning here. You could see very intense winds here, lots of rotation, and then this goes into the Yucatan Peninsula by Tuesday, November the 19th, and then moves into the Gulf where it could strengthen up a little bit more into a strong tropical storm or a low-grade hurricane. But you can see if you follow the points here and over here on the Euro, we can see if we connect the dots, this goes right over the southern coast of Florida. And that would be within the 7 to 10 day time frame for the coast of Florida. So this is really far out for anyone living in Florida. We should not worry about this just yet because we don't know where this is going yet. But we know it's going to form up pretty quickly in the northwestern Caribbean. Now looking at the, the Canadian model, this is the gym model showing us a similar outcome here. Showing us that system does develop pretty quickly. Lots of rainfall, some gusty winds, and then it moves towards the Yucatan. But it's a lot weaker on this run as there's some wind shear, some drier air that get in the way of the system. But still, it does show us a weak tropical storm, maybe a mid-grade tropical storm approaching Florida. But there's one more model that I wanted to show you. And this is the Icon model. This is the German model showing us the same thing. Similar outcome like the Euro and the Canadian are showing some moderate to heavy rainfall. And then it impacts directly into, say, Cozumel, Mexico, the southern Yucatan Peninsula. And it really disintegrates and then might try to redevelop into a tropical depression or storm as it moves into the northern Gulf of Mexico. But that's within about seven to eight days. So there's a lot of uncertainty in the forecast. So the question really remains, why does the GFS show a powerful hurricane forming up in the northwestern Caribbean? Well, if we look at our deep layer moisture plot here, brown colors indicate lots of drier air in the deep layers of the atmosphere. These turquoise and green colors show us a lot more moisture in the deep layer of the atmosphere. Hurricanes, tropical systems like lots of deep layer moisture. So when we go forward, you can see this, this there's a big po uh, pocket of moisture down here that the system is going to form underneath. So all this green here is moist air, it's humid, right? And then it's going to form up yeah, even stronger, 942 millibars. But notice that there's no wind shear to shove all this drier air in. So this is going to stay contained and piled up down here. There's a big ridge of high pressure up here to the north. And there's some westerly flow here. So there's um, there's kind of a component, or actually there's another ridge down here that's going to kind of keep this sitting down here a little longer. And it's then eventually, once that ridge moves this way, the system will be able to get slingshotted and move toward the northwest. But look at all of that moisture. Very symmetrical here. This is the reason why this thing could really explode uh, very insanitily. And then similar to Milton, um, this could become asymmetrical once it hits Florida. But this would be in about, say, the 8 to 9 day time frame. But 959 millibars, significant rainfall, flooding, some intense hurricane force winds as that moves through. And then it gets a little more asymmetrical. Actually, very similar, if not exactly similar to Milton as it makes its second half track over the much of florida we'll see about that but quite really similar in those two systems milton and now we could be dealing with sarah this is also why i'm concerned that this could become a powerful hurricane in the northwestern caribbean is if we look at our 99l spaghetti plots this just came out folks this is fresh out of the press 18z model run for november 12th and it is showing all these models showing a major hurricane, maybe even a Category 4 hurricane. Now, this is uh, this is the first uh, model run cycle, so we don't know if this is actually going to stick. But wow, look at all of the models here showing an intense hurricane, Category 3, Category 4 hurricane in about 5 to 7 days. Even the European Ensemble Spaghetti Plot is showing something a little similar. You can see... Notice that the system is further away from land here of Honduras and Belize, and it uh, it strengthens up faster than, say, if it's closer to land, then there's maybe more land interaction. But look at all these pink tracks right here. This is showing us maybe a potential for a major hurricane, maybe even a Cat 5 hurricane. There's a 940, that's a Cat 4, and then there's a Looks like a 932 millibar plot there uh, showing us a category, a high end four, maybe a low end five on this. 
But notice how it's all over the place. Some models go this way, some models go this way, and then kind of do this. And then some models go way out over here and then curve it and do something like that. This would be a very unusual, weird, uh, obnoxious track. And then they loop it around a little bit more times, and then it moves it this way towards say Honduras as well as Belize eventually in about eight to nine days. Even the GEFS ensemble forecast is showing something pretty similar like the European ensemble only that there's less tracks over here but it's showing us that there's a lot of uncertainty. You can see the, the tracks where this could potentially go. This could go this way. It could go over here loop around and then go that way or it could even go out this way and then turn like that and hit say Cuba. In other words, that anywhere um, living in this area where I circled in needs to be watched. Now, the reason why some of the models are going a little concerningly strong with this is when we look at our ship's model, this stands for Statistical Hurricane Intensity Prediction Scheme. This is showing us the different variables in the atmosphere that need a major hurricane to form up. And what we're seeing here is, of course, the maximum potential intensity is very high, One. 60 170 knots that is a cat 5 similar to milton but look at our wind shear our wind, uh, deep layer vertical wind shear is under five knots for the entire six day period six day period that is this is day five this is day six and then only at day seven does it become maybe 15 knots of vertical wind shear which is still generally light so in other words over the next entire seven day forecast we could be looking at very light vertical wind shear Plenty full of moisture over the next five days, so that's not a problem. And really high upper ocean heat content and a favorable environment for this system to strengthen up very, very quickly. Again, possibly to a Category 4, maybe even a Category 3 hurricane in the next three to five days. I actually meant five to seven days. Now, when looking at our sea surface temperature anomalies here from CyclonicWX.com, showing us above average sea surface temperatures anywhere between about a degree or two above average for this time of the year. It's only mid-November and we're still seeing very warm sea surface temperatures down here to near low to mid 80s for this time. And then of course for the Gulf of Mexico, very warm, so not a problem. If this thing wants to get into the Gulf, it goes this way or it goes this way. It's gonna run into some very warm sea surface temperature anomalies enough for strengthening. When we look at our actual sea surface temperatures, we're looking at the upper 70s to uh, actually we're looking at the low to mid 80s, especially down here in the Caribbean, some islands here showing us water temperatures of 30 Celsius. That's about 83 to 80, about 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And on top of that, we have very extreme upper ocean heat content. Look at all this red here. Our system's right here. It's going to go this way and then it's going to kind of meander and then go this way. And it's going to spend a whole lot of time over that very high upper ocean heat content. And that's why the GFS model is going out of control with this, showing it maybe a Cat 4, maybe a Category 5 hurricane. Now, if you found this video really helpful, informative, and detailed, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the like button, and share this video with your family and friends on social media. I will do the best that I can to keep you all updated on Invest 99L as long as it remains a threat for rapid intensification and strengthening as it gets closer to land areas or if it does at all. So please subscribe if you haven't already to get the latest updates on this system. Thank you all for watching and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.